Internet, Mike Bertolini here. Roll20 recently updated their Call of Cthulhu character sheets, so I knew that I had to make a new video for both regular Call of Cthulhu and Pulp Cthulhu. We start by opening up our Games tab and clicking on the Journal section. Under Journal, there should be blank character sheets available for all the players. Um, I personally either give my characters blank sheets or pre-generated characters. Um, the players cannot generate the character sheets themselves. This stuff has to be provided by the keepers. I, um, when we create, when we're doing our editing our character, we give the character a name. This name will appear on the journal screen. Um, we upload an appropriate picture um, from the internet. You, know, you can scan a picture in and off so that you have access to it on your computer, whatever. Um, and select a token if applicable. The keeper may decide to do this later. I always do. I make my tokens myself, so I take care of all that. Choose who can control and edit and view your character sheet and who has it in their journals. Um, when it comes to players, they prefer to be able to really see each other's characters. Um, so I usually allow everyone to see um, different various characters but they can only be edited and controlled by the specific player. Please note, the Keeper and GM will always be able to control and edit the character. There's a mechanics reason for this. Um, if you have a backstory for your character, you can enter it here. And there is a section at the bottom of the page that the GMs can enter information that only they can see. When we're done with that, save changes. And now we have our blank character sheet. So under character sheet, you will notice a little tab up here, what looks like it has a cogwheel and a small arrow indicating additional information. Click this, and you'll be able to change certain era-specific content. Now, your keeper should have already told you what era the game is taking place in. If not, harass them. This is vital information. Now, the character sheets are defaulted to the classic era, the 1920s, um, but the default era selection is Dark Ages. It's listed alphabetically. So make sure to select the correct era. If you change the era anytime after you've entered information to the character sheet, all the information is going to be erased. So select your era first. Make sure your keeper tells you what era the game is. I don't care if it's 1920s, if it's modern, if it's Dark Ages, if it's End Times, if it's if it's Gaslight, it should be a totally different character sheet. But know that ahead of time. Um, if you are playing a game with the pulp rules, you can select all of these icons that are under the pulp heading. Um, this will allow you to have higher HP, pulp talents, and some pulp-specific insanities. But for the purpose of this video, we are going to ignore these options. I'll cover these more in the um, pulp character creation video that I do next. Now you can also select options for common dice rolls, armor, and companions. 
Please note, companions is not meant for a human companion. Unless that human companion is a spouse, a slave, whatever. Ask your keeper how you should proceed and take any appropriate sanity loss if applicable. Um, I just did common dex rolls for ease of use. Once we selected the appropriate era and made any changes to the character sheets that make play easier, we will fill everything out. Now, like in real life Call of Cthulhu, we have to determine characteristics and spend skill points. I have already randomly rolled characteristics, which I will plug in. Ooh, I'm trying to scroll, I can't. Okay. Strength is 3d6 times 5. Dex, 3d6 times 5. Con. 3d6 times 5, well, already 50. Size, 2d6 plus 6 times 5. App, or your appearance, is 3d6 times 5. Intelligence is 2d6 plus 6 times 5. Your POW is 3d6 times 5. And your magic points that you start out with is one fifth of this total number. Your education is 2d6 plus 6 times 5. Let's see, my luck is 3d6 times 5, is relatively lucky. Um, Sunny Stan is equal to your POW, so he's also a little crazy. Um, he's This character is not very strong, doesn't move, doesn't really have quick... Uh, he doesn't have a jump on things. He's only had decks of 35. Um, but he's smart and well-educated and very lucky. Um, as with the Apple 40, he's not quite average looking. He's a little bit ugly. He might have a mole somewhere prominent, but... And with a move rate of seven, and then he can move a lot per round. Keeper decides all of that. Um, I fill out my basic character information. Samuel Pell, Sam Pell, Sam Ball. Let's see, player. He's an NPC. See. Occupation, medical doctor, age. Age is important in regular Call of Cthulhu, not Paul Cthulhu. Keep that in mind. Sex male. His residence where he currently resides. You may or may not have this information. The birthplace, you really may not know. Or you might. Um, if it's a progenitor character, you might not have all of that information. Uh, you can see up here, these are the dice rolls that I selected. Um, now there is, ironically, a 1d12, chances are you're never going to roll 
a D12 in Call of Cthulhu. Um, all the other ones, 1D3, 1D4, 1D5, 1D5 is itself, it's just an odd one. Um, 1D6, 1D7, again odd, 1D8, 1D10, 1D20, and 1D100 is the most common one you're going to roll. I mean, this is, Call of Cthulhu is a percentile game, so anything is within uh, 100, chances are percentile. Now, remember I said age is important. Now, due to age, you can make an improvement role for education. Age typically determines any bonuses or negatives that the player incurs. For this age, 37, in Call of Cthulhu, we need to make one education improvement roll. To do this, we roll 1d100. If we roll above our education score, we can roll 1d10 and add those points to EDU before buying our skills. However, if we roll under our EDU score, no improvements are made. This age doesn't incur any penalties. Above 39, there are penalties for strength, dex, con, and app. Consult the investigator's handbook for exact details. This is just an example. I won't bore you with the individual breakdown. Now, when I rolled randomly, I did not gain any bonus to my EDU, so I don't get any extra skill points. Now it's time to buy skills. You can either split all of your skills among all of the occupation skills, but that would make you not especially good at anything. I would recommend choosing five or six skills and putting all of your points in them. You should try to make at least one of these skills 50 points or higher. As a doctor, I intend this character to have a lot of points put into first aid and medicine. Now, skills is your EDU times four. Um, and they're determined by occupation. You also have a personal interest skill point pool, which is your INT times two, in this case, 180. These can be any skill that are not career related. Think of them as skills learned from hobbies. Um, once skills are done, we can use our credit rating to determine what we own, how much we spent to buy these things, etc. A full list of items is available in the investigator's handbook. However, keepers may choose not to concern themselves or you with the exact details of money, so long as it doesn't appear that your character is living outside of their means, which in itself could be a useful plot hook. Now, um, I'm going to plug in these, some of these numbers. So just give me a second. Um, I'm going to pause the video here and enter the skills. I'll be right back. All right, now I finished plugging in all the skills. Um, you can take a look at what I've entered. You notice on uh, Roll20's character sheets, the skills already have the base values included in them. Um, so you don't have to add those points in. Let me just add the points up as you need to. I may also notice that over here, I wrote in a couple that I wanted. Um, that is our occupational skill points. Didn't give them a lot of points, but I gave them enough points where they're likely going to be somewhat useful. Um, fighting, <laughs> he's not good at fighting. Um, we can put in all our gear, processions, cash, and assets over here in these two boxes. But now we're going to have to come up with a backstory. This is very important for your character creation. Not only is it to sort of make your character unique, um, but it's also a way for you to recover sanity. Um, you know, maybe heal up some injuries, that sort of thing. 
Now, um, when it's, it comes time to create a backstory, we can determine our investigator background in one of three ways. We can either one, make a character backstory however we wish, you know, fill out the different sections, um, typically personal descriptions, traits, ideologies, significant people, meaningful locations. Two, we can look at the list of suggestions in the keeper's guide and pick and choose from those tables. Or three, roll randomly on those tables in the keeper's guide, um, a 1d10 on each table, and let chance determine who the character is. For the purposes of this video, I rolled randomly, only changing things that didn't really make sense. So I'm gonna fill these in. And you can make it at the more specific, the better. So like you see, I'm just a significant person. I actually gave my grandfather a name. That's important. And once you finish filling out those as much as you want, you're done. I'm let your keeper know when your character is all set so that they can review it if they wish and make notes concerning um, important details, such as some stats, some skills that you might have, character's name, age, all that. Um, if you want to know more about character creation and some basic gameplay mechanics for Call of Cthulhu, check out Seth Skorkowski's video playlist. Link will be in the description. Thanks for watching this updated video on character creation for Call of Cthulhu on Roll20. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please leave a like and remember to click the subscribe icon so that my uploads are presented on your home screen. Ring that bell icon to be notified when I make a post and join the Discord channel for a chance to play Clock 2 on Roll20 with us. Link in the description. Thank you, and have a great day.